Pizza Pro says finances. I mean, I think you might be slightly sarcastic there, uh, but it's funny you say that because um, I've been, I like, you know, YouTube spits videos out. I've been watching some stuff that was basically financial advice, uh, but it made me think about some things. I've actually been really fortunate in life to have been taught some very good and sound financial advice when I was younger uh, that really helped me really helped me um, like without without having to learn the hard way really helped me kind of um, get my money in order early on right because for a lot of people you end up working paycheck to paycheck and really struggling to you know pull things together uh, with that and the stuff that I was watching was kind of breaking down how things are unfairly set up against the poor like when you are poor in society you tend to get punished for being poor and when you are not you tend to get rewarded and that's because of the way uh, things are structured like you know there are fees and penalties for being late on payments and so when you start slipping into that area of not being able to pay for stuff and being behind on things you get punished even more and it keeps you in the in the trap so I was thinking I would like to pass on some of the advice that I had to all of you if you would be interested in hearing it because I do know some really good things to do some rules of thumb and for me like when I was earning less than minimum wage I was still saving money and I was still working towards a deposit for the house that I live into today and I had to make some sacrifices to do that but I could have treated that very differently and luckily I was just taught some sound uh, financial advice by my dad who like really drilled it into my head and in a weird way it was like you know I was a teenager I was like a kid no oh, shut up dad kind of thing right like I thought I didn't want to know but like when push came to shove all that stuff really helped and to this day I still do a lot of the things that he taught me my parents told me never go into debt and I never have says weirdly RF it's really good advice debt is crippling once you're in it um, it is gonna come down hard on you see the thing with debt is you get like I said you get punished for being in debt and that keeps you trapped in debt what did he teach you says uh, spirit walker quite a few things so this video that I saw the other day that started getting my head turning over about this stuff was talking about dining out and the price of dining out, how expensive it is to eat out. Now we all understand the concept that eating out is more expensive, but because it always happens in a, a small transaction, right? You pay a few bucks or dollars or pounds, depending on where you're from, right? For a meal, it never seems like a big deal. But you have to think in long term, you have to think in a case of like a lifestyle. Hey, if I eat at this shop every single day, then that is a cost that I am paying over a long period of time. And the reality is it's always cheaper to prepare your own food, to buy groceries. And if you are, you know, going to eat out every day, it's going to cost a lot of money over time. And this video actually showed you that the markup price is around a third Okay, that seems pretty reasonable to me. So every meal that you have when you go out and eat, when you don't prepare it yourself, probably costs about a third more than um, than when you make it yourself, right? Now, if you tally this up over a long period of time, then you're going to realize that these little dollars that you spend, they actually add up into thousands of pounds. And that's where you've got to think, right, if you're trying to save on a deposit for a house... That's several thousand pounds, but changing your eating strategy over a couple of years, you can make that money up in that one little field alone, right? Bottled water in shops is marked up something like 1,000, says Crockett Guy. In theory, some bottled water would be marked up almost infinite because, like, you should be able to go. It's, it's like this in the UK. You can go into any uh, restaurant and ask for tap water and they don't charge you for it, Right? So in theory, like you're paying for tap water, a lot of bottled water is just tap water. Um, this this is a really good example of just learning to save the pennies. There's this little quote that I always heard. Uh, look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. So every time you can make a smart decision where you save a little bit of money, even if it's just small amounts, it adds up in the long run. And one of the best things you can do uh, for your own finances is to actually get a bank account that pays interest because 
if you're in a situation where you're in an overdraft, you need to get out of that immediately because whatever money you earn and make, being in an overdraft is like adding a cost to having that money. You want to get it working in the other direction. You want to have just enough money saved up so that you earn interest on it. And then when you get hit with life's unexpected things where all of a sudden you need a load of money, you got a little bit of that tucked away. You got it saved away. You don't have to go in an overdraft. You don't have to get out an emergency loan, right? These these are huge game changes. And although they sound kind of obvious, right, it's a really good strategy to make sure you're you're doing these things. And so a really big one is not eating out. And I myself lately have uh, been eating out a little bit more than usual, and I notice it in my wallet, like you can tell. And here's another thing. Oh, man, just remember something else, right? So when you go to the ATM and you take out money, you get charged a fee. This is a classic example of what I'm talking about. You get charged a fee, okay? Now, if you go to the ATM and you take out $10 and you get charged a dollar, that's 10%. If you go to the ATM and you take out $100 and you get charged a dollar, that's 1%, right? We can all do that math. Um, and so this is another reason why having savings is a good idea. So when you go to the ATM and you go to withdraw money, but there's a service fee, but you really need to make that withdrawal, oh, I've got this bit totally wrong, haven't I? Then you've got the... Um, you know, you've got the means to take out 100 and therefore the value of that $100 has only been taxed 1% as opposed to 10. So this is the, this, this principle applies to like bulk buying things like groceries, you know, having money saved up so you can take a good deal and make the most out of it when you can, you know. If you see that rice sachets, something that you can just put in your, uh, put in your cupboard and eat months later. When you see that they're on offer, that's the time to buy them. There's loads of little strategies like that. And it's about learning as many of them as you can. Because like I said earlier, they all just save you cents here and there or pennies. But over time, they, they add up. I'm learning more about finances from watching a guy I've never met playing Minecraft than when I did took econ in high school. You do not get taught pretty much anything about personal finance in school. That's one of the really disappointing things. You're never taught any of this in school and it's a really good time to learn it because when you're young you're quite impressionable and you know a lot of materialistic ideas tend to appeal to young people fashion you know having the latest gizmos and gadgets right being the cool cool kid in school with the iPhone 11 bulk buying is actually more wasteful because you end up not eating some expired food says Price Jamak uh, that's like a that's like an almost correct statement it's only true if you're wasteful. If you're not wasteful and you're smart and you plan, then it isn't wasteful, right? So if you're going to bulk buy, I mean, it should go without saying, but you're doing it under the guise of not wasting what you're buying in bulk. I, 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 th I think it's just, just a reminder. Don't go crazy with bulk buying. Make sure you can manage what you buy, right? Otherwise, you could, yeah, you could end up wasting some stuff. I took a personal finance class in high school, and this is so much more helpful than the class was. Well, there you go. I want to open a cafe, but I have no interest in taking a loan. I wish I knew what to do, says Pedro Yuhi. Uh, taking a business loan is quite different from taking a personal loan, because a business loan is a risk more often held on the shoulders of the person taking out the loan, because businesses are often seen as, you know, stirring the economy, participating in the capitalist game and so business loans don't often show, fall on the shoulder of the people that run the business like if a business defaults you just that's it like that isn't on your shoulder but it depends on the type of business and I could be wrong you know like uh, I think that's how it works um, so you would need to show what you're capable of doing convince a loan company to give you a loan for your shop have a plan of action and you know open it up and and then that loan would be hopefully over time paid back. But if you were to fail in your business adventure, it would end up on their shoulders. His advice is sound, but you need to start early. It's a lot harder to get savings if you're broke and in debt. Save early and it's easier because it's easier to buy. Don't be me, kids. I don't get savings because my paycheck is spent before I even receive it. Yeah, um, but one thing to be said is that even if you're in debt, you should always head in this direction right? It's like being unhealthy. If you're unhealthy at 50 or if you're unhealthy at 20, you should just head in the right direction. Start walking more, start eating better. It doesn't matter how much baggage you've accumulated. You can work it all off eventually. 
Um, so you should always head in that direction. Don't ever be defeatist with yourself. Don't ever tell yourself you can't do it. It's totally possible. Pro tip, if you haven't had an OCRAP moment that you need to spend your savings, like when my foundation cracked, do not spend your savings unless you can do uh, it all at once. You cannot get a loan for the rest once you're out of savings. Banks only loan you money if you have money. Yeah, and those predatory banks that loan you money when you don't, if you don't have money and you're loaning money, you're, you're in a bad situation. You need to reassess what you're doing. Ask if the thing you're buying is necessary. If it 100% is, if it's a roof over your head, if it's food in your belly, you need a new strategy. You need uh, a way to get out of this. And by the way, there is a community on Reddit called Financial Advice where they're just happy to answer people's questions and people come together and talk about this kind of stuff to help one another. It's a really great community. And I, I look at these things and I read them and I'm like very interested in taking them in. And there's all of these little things I've learned over the way. But I've just been very fortunate to have started on the right side with finances. It kind of happened when I lost my first job big time because although things were all right and I was comfortable, I was kind of living paycheck to paycheck and not saving. And then when I had that thought of like, this is my last paycheck. Then it all changed for me. Then I just kind of, in that moment, understood why savings was so important. It was like, oh, if there's like a gig that comes up that I want to go to, I can't go. And so, as for what someone said about savings just a moment ago, um, yeah, like, you don't, you also don't want to look at savings like, oh, I've saved up 10 grand. I'll buy myself a fancy new car. Being able to live without a fancy car and realizing that it's just a vehicle that gets you from A to B and seeing the functionality of it, like the less places where you spend materialistically and just realize that that's not the value in your life, like the value is the people that you care and love about and seeing one another and it's not about having a flash fancy car, like yeah, savings isn't so that you can go spend it on something, right? It's there for security, it's there so when life happens you have a fallback, you have protection. Um, when you might walk into work one day and they tell you you're redundant, you have savings, you've got a plan for the next part of your life. This money here is going to get you to that date there and you've got to figure everything else out in between. You shouldn't drive if it's within biking range distance. I never drive if it's within five miles, says Nasal Straw. That is a great thing to do for many reasons. Many reasons. I have been driving my car so much less lately, which means I save money on petrol. And my personal fitness goes up as I spend time on my bike cycling around. Yes, the bike costs money as well, but I mean, for the amount of times I've ridden it, it's like every time I ride my bike now, it's like, what, 20p? <laughs> and that's actually what I do with things that I buy. Like when I brought my treadmill, uh, my treadmill cost a couple hundred pounds. And when I ran on it the first time, I was just thinking, this run cost me a hundred pounds. Like, so the next run's going to be like half. And then the one after that's going to be like less. And then you know, the more you run on it, now it's like every time I run on it, it's like, what, 50p? <laughs> you know? And I think that's what I'm doing there, is I'm reminding myself that when I invest money in something, I should always look at it that way. I recently brought a laptop, and I think it was a really poor decision, because I I actually use it a fair bit, um, but not really getting a lot of use out of it. And... So I look at that as kind of like a poor investment because I was thinking I want to go on holiday and then I've got to still make videos and la 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 la. I'm going on holiday and I'm not bringing my laptop because I don't want to make videos when I'm on holiday. <laughs> like I need a, it's a holiday from that. So that was kind of a poor decision for me. Um, I think you should always think about things like that when you're purchasing. Like, are you really going to get how much time are you going to get out of this thing? Is it really worth that? And that will help you save money as well, make better decisions. Uh, I brought rings for workout at about $30. Use them like 100 times now. Best investment ever made, says ZWRQ. I've spent a few hundred pounds on my own personal gym. And because I've been using it for years, you know, I in one year, a gym membership has been paid for. And I've got all this equipment. And now I've been using it for many years. It seemed like a good way to do it in the beginning, and it still is a very good way to do it. Uh, buying your own like set of dumbbells and a bench is very cheap. You can get a decent amount of equipment for about £100. And you know, what's that, like four months at a gym membership? And you can use that for years. Of course, you don't have all the same equipment you have at a gym. But uh, again, it's being money smart. To me, it's more convenient to have a little bit of equipment, use it at home. 
these are the kind of decisions you need to think about with money, right? You really need to think it through. And anyway, one of the other tips I was going to mention, definitely don't want to get this confused, okay? Credit cards. I use credit cards for everything I buy. And now the first thing you're probably thinking is alarm bells. However, you have a credit card and you pay it off every single month and you do not pay any fee for being late because you paid it all off. Again, this is something you can only do when you have money saved up, right? You can't do it paycheck to paycheck. If you miss that credit card payment, you've got problems. But if you know you've got a stash of money in the bank to take care of this and you don't go crazy with your spending, um, you should use a credit card because you are not paying for anything for an entire month. So your entire outgoings, imagine, let's say you spend 500 bucks on this thing, that thing, and that thing, food, rent, gas to drive around, whatever it is in your life. If you're putting that all on a credit card and you're very capable of paying it off every month, then you have gone a month without spending that money and you get interest on that money if it's in a bank account with interest. So every month that goes by, all the credit cards that I use, they give me a month's worth of interest on that amount. So I get interest on everything that um, I spend in terms of bills and whatnot. Now, you also get things like loyalty schemes, you get cash back on certain types of things that you use your credit card on. These are things that you want to take advantage of. When you go into a store like Sainsbury's and they got that Nectar card or Asda have a credit card that gives you a percent back, you need to take every single one of these opportunities. They are not reasons to go and spend at a shop. They don't mean, oh, I'm going to go to that one because I have this card. You always go to the shop that makes economic sense. You always go to the one that's cheaper, but you take advantage of their schemes because they're going to give you like fractions of pennies back on the pound. But it's a practice. It's a routine. Once you're doing it, over time, you are going to get quite a bit of money back. You're going to get all those cashback rewards for using the credit card. You're going to get um, that interest on a, on a month's worth of whatever because you put it through the credit card, right? And so this means that you're earning money out of whatever money you have. And these little strategies go a long way um, in the long run. We have a cashback card and we have everything we can go through and keep the balance at zero, says Nobella. That sounds like the same sort of strategy. <laughs> that guy, Brock, says, loving or hating, he's spitting straight facts. I'm trying to give you some knowledge off the top of my head just about things you could do to, you know, improve your financial situation. And man, boy, what a boring subject in some ways, right? But it's it's like when you talk about this, it's not about it being exciting. Man, it's, a, it's about get, taking control of your life because once you learn these things and you get it in order... All of a sudden, stuff that you want to do that costs money becomes more available to you because you've got your finances in order. And so stuff like this could be really helpful for you. Uh, I think it's interesting. It motivates me to start early as well, says made Linarosaurus. Well, that's really good. And, and again, you don't have to start early. Wherever you are in your life, make these changes if you can. Like, get on top of your finances. You'll find it liberating, uh, especially, like, mental health as well. Not having the stress of worrying about where your next, like, paycheck is coming from or how you're going to pay that bill being on top of these things will help you mentally because you'll be in control and you know you'll have the freedom of knowing hey I've earned this much it's in the bank and it's uh yeah Mickey Snipes says don't spend money that you don't have it's great advice it really is um but there's there's so many things that catch people out this is the stuff I really feel like I should have thought for a little bit more um, so off the top of my head, something that catches people out, you go into a shop, okay, whatever you're going to buy on that occasion, the smaller the amount of money you pay, you are paying less money. You've got to be careful when you think you're getting a bargain and you're paying more money for it. Do you go into a shop sometimes to buy a bottle of Coke and it's two for one? So, or not two for one, because that's two for one, right? <laughs> Uh, but it's like buy one get one half price you know two for one take take two for one but buy one get one half price you think bargain so you buy one and a half here's the thing you are only going in there for one bottle maybe that bottle will have gotten you home and then when you get home you have a tap of glass water here's how I save money I never buy bottled drinks wherever I go unless I've run out of water and then I buy bottled water but that's one thing I do again healthier option I'm not having fizzy drinks I'm not constantly uh, pumping sugar into my body you know 
and I'm having water. It's the healthiest drink you can have. It's your body's made of 70% of it. So take bottles of water with you wherever you go, and then it saves you money from buying, you know, stuff in the shop. So that's another good tip, you know. Again, like making sandwiches when you go out and not having a meal. Rex says 30% off of a 100% purchase isn't you saving $30. It's you spending 70. They'll put whatever they can in to get you by. Rex has got it right on the mark there. And that's the point that I was kind of kind of getting at. You pay what you pay. If you're getting a thousand percent off, you're still paying a price. Always look at that price. Don't look at the saving. Look at how much you're spending. Because chances are sometimes you think you're going to buy something because there's this crazy big saving, right? And it might not have been something you ever thought you wanted, but there you are considering paying for it. And that is a typical trap. That one fangirl says financial and health tip, invest in reusable water container. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, a thousand percent off means you get paid by the people selling, I think. (laughs) You know exactly what I was saying though, right? You knew exactly what I was saying. Yet you choose to call me a derp. I don't understand why. Uh, But X, when you buy food on a discount, that means it will take more time before you'll have to buy food again. Thus, you're actually saving, not spending more. Oh, yes. Surprise tea. Okay. Like, what we're saying about having a percent off of something, remember, you're always paying the price. So, quite often, you will see, if you go into Asda, you know, there'll be like a, like I say, it's like two for one deals or buy, buy four and get, you know, 50p off. Like, just remember, you're paying the price that you're paying. So if you end up buying something you didn't want or didn't need or won't make use of, it's a trick in a way. So you just got to be careful with it, you know. So imagine you go into a shop, right, and it's like you can buy a banana for a pound or you can buy a thousand bananas for a hundred pounds. Each of those bananas are 10p each, but are you going to eat a thousand bananas? Probably not. So that's like, that's the point in an extreme example, Anyway, I think we've had a really good discussion about that today. And uh, one last thing I'll say, because Enderok here has reminded me, if you want to save money, consider cutting out alcohol as well. Alcohol is extremely expensive. Smoking as well. Smoking is way more addictive. So for people who smoke or vape, like it might be real hard to cut it out. But like alcohol is not nutritious. It is empty calories. It is, uh, you know, literally attacking your body. That's why you get drunk, because your body doesn't actually want that, you know? It's poison to your body. So a big money saver can be cutting out alcohol. A lot of people don't think of that as well, because drinking's so casual. Cut out some alcohol, you might save yourself a fair bit of money.